It was Christmas Eve. An 11-year-old French girl named Tessie was decorating the Christmas tree. She lived with her mother in a small apartment in the suburbs of Paris. Her mother worked as a nurse at a local hospital. Late that evening, Tessie's mother called to say that she would not be home until late that night. Tessie continued to decorate the Christmas tree with all of the lovely things her mother had bought her from the shop. She draped some multicolored Christmas lights around the tree and hung beautiful ornaments on the branches. After placing the angel on top of the Christmas tree, she had finally finished decorating and sat down to relax and watch TV. Even though she was all alone in the sixth floor apartment of the building around the corner of the street, Tessie felt safe as she gazed out of the window across the lights of the Parisian skyline. From her window, she could see the Eiffel Tower and the Champs de Mars. Most of the other tenants in the building had gone home to celebrate Christmas Eve with their relatives in the countryside. The apartment building was almost deserted. Tessie was growing bored, waiting for her mom to return. Suddenly, she thought she heard a scratching noise at the front door. She turned down the television and listened carefully. There was an eerie silence. Curious, she slowly approached the door and looked through the people. To her surprise, she saw a man standing outside, dressed in a red suit with a fluffy white trim. He was large and fat with a dirty gray beard and wore a red hat on his head. He almost looked like Santa Claus. He knocked the door loudly. Nervous and concerned, Tessie asked through the door, Who's there? It's Santa Claus, the man replied. Let me in. I am cold and tired, and I'm hungry too. On hearing this, a chill went down Tessie's spine. She was no dummy. She knew that whoever this creepy man was, he was not Santa Claus for sure. My mother is at home right now, she said, her voice shaking. Please leave. Peering through the peephole, Tessie watched as the man's eyes filled with anger and his face twisted into a grimace of hate. He began knocking at the door even harder and rattling the doorknob. It's Santa Claus, Tessie, he growled. Have you laid out some milk and cookies for me, Tessie? You know how much Santa loves milk and cookies. The young girl had a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach. How did he know her name? The man then began kicking and pounding at the door. She peeked out again and saw him reach into his coat pocket and pull out a switchblade. He shoved the knife into the keyhole and tried to pry it open. Tessie was terrified. She didn't know what to do. If you don't go away, I will call the police, she shouted. All of a sudden, the knocking stopped. Tessie stood perfectly still, afraid to even move. Minutes passed, and there was no noise. She started to think that the man may have been scared and walked away because of her threat. She slowly approached the door and looked through the peephole to see if the man was really gone. The hallway seemed to be empty. Suddenly, she saw the man running down the hallway with an axe in his hand. Tessie screamed and ran to the closet in the panic. She crouched down and hid behind a coat as tears of fright rolled down her cheeks. She heard the boom, boom, boom as the man tried to smash down her front door. There was a mighty crack as the door gave way and the man came crashing down through the splintered wood. Laughing to himself, he called out, Tessie, my pretty, where are you, Tessie? Don't be afraid. We'll have ourselves some fun tonight. Where are you hiding? The crazed intruder walked around the house, searching for the frightened little girl. Tessie curled up in the closet, trembling with fear. She dreaded to think what he planned to do with her. Suddenly, the handle of the closet moved up and down. And then the door began shaking, and she heard the man's voice laughing. <laughs> Tessie, I know you're in there, he said. Open up for Santa. Open up before I open you up. The man swung his axe and struck the closet door with a huge loud bang, tearing into the flimsy wood. Tessie screamed and began crying bitterly. She grabbed a wired coat hanger and twisted it into a point. She waited, her eyes wide open, and her hands were trembling. There was another loud crash, and the closet doors gave way in a hail of splinters. The horrible man broke open the doors off their hinges and thrust his head in between the coats. He was laughing and drooling like a madman as his huge, gnarled hands grabbed the horrified girl. Tessie held up the pointed end of the coat hanger and bravely thrust it into the bad man's face. It went straight into his eyes. No! 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 He recoiled in pain, screaming with rage as blood flowed down his cheek. He ripped the wire out of his eye socket and grabbed Tessie by the hair, and then he dragged her, kicking and screaming out of the closet. The man pushed Tessie to the ground and held her tightly by the neck, leaning over her. Blood spilled out of his eye, splattering all over her face. His mouth twisted into a grotesque smile, and he whispered in her ear, 
Tonight you will be privileged, my lovely Tessie. I've got a list, and I've checked it twice. I'm here to decide if you've been naughty or nice. You can scream and scream and beg for your life, but naughty girls get the axe, and nice girls get the knife. This scared Tessie to the core, and as much as she was scared, she noticed the pointed coat hanger thrown next to her. She gathered the courage, grabbed it by her hand, and shoved it into the crazy man's chest. The man began to writhe in pain as he howled loudly. Ah! And fell next to Tessie. His huge hand was on Tessie as he almost went unconscious. Tessie moved his hand and ran away, screaming and in tears. It was after midnight when Tessie's mother returned home. She saw the front door hacked into pieces and rushed inside the house to look for her daughter. Gazing around at the carnage, her eyes struggled to take it all in. Then she began screaming in absolute horror as she saw the man dressed as Santa Claus lying almost dead on the floor in a pool of blood. She then looked for Tessie, who was sitting numb by the corner of the room with the blood-stained coat hanger. She couldn't believe her eyes that her 11-year-old daughter had killed Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos.